Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we're going to look at Hoyne's method. In this topic, we will derive Hoyne's method by estimating and averaging slopes. And we are going to look at this technique visually. We will see that the error is order h cubed for a single step, and we will look at two such examples. We will see how to apply Hoyne's method multiple times, and we will have an implementation of this in C++. We will look at two examples of multiple steps and see what happens to the error. Finally, we will derive the formula based on the idea of integration and the trapezoidal rule. Now, evaluating the function at the left-hand endpoint to approximate the integral is one way of calculating a Riemann sum. This, however, only uses one value of the function. However, the value of the function is going to change between the two endpoints, and so picking just one is sometimes suboptimal. The trapezoidal rule assumes that the function is approximately linear from on the interval from A to B, in which case the average of the two endpoints is actually a better approximation. And indeed, if the second derivative is not very large, then this is actually not a bad approximation. You'll recall that Euler's method uses only one slope to approximate the next point. So we calculate the slope at this point, and then we add h times that slope onto the previous y value. So in this case, if we were to approximate the solution at t equals 0 0.4, we would add 0 0.4 times that slope onto y naught, in this case 1, and that would be our approximation of the function at t equals 0 0.4. However, just like with integrating functions, the slope changes across the interval from 0 to 0 0.4. As we can see here, as we go on, the slope in the vicinity of the solution becomes more negative. And so therefore, our estimate with Euler's method actually overshoots the actual value of the solution to the initial value problem. Wouldn't it be better if we could average the slopes? Like, let's calculate the slope at the second point, take the average of those two slopes, and then follow the average of that slope out a distance h. There's only one problem. We don't know what the value of the solution is at y of t0 plus h or y at t1. That's what we're trying to find. So we can't really do this because we don't know the value of y at t sub 1, and therefore we can't calculate the average of these two slopes. Can we approximate y at t sub 1? Well, yeah, we could. We could just use Euler's approximation of t sub 1. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to start by calculating the slope at t sub k. We will then calculate the slope at t sub k plus h, and the y value will be y sub k plus h times the slope we just calculated. So this is Euler's approximation of the value of y at t k plus 1. Well, now that we've calculated these two slopes, we will actually approximate the value of the solution at t k plus 1 with the value y k plus h times the average of these two slopes that we've just found. So we're calculating the slope at t k, we're estimating the slope at t k plus 1, and taking the average of those two. Visually, we will proceed as follows. At the current point, we will calculate the slope. So we've calculated the slope by substituting t0 and y0 into the function. 
this gives us an approximation of the next point. We will then calculate the slope at that point. So now we have two slopes. We will now take the average of those two slopes and we will follow that average slope out a distance h. That will be our better approximation, hopefully, of the solution to the initial value problem at, in this case, t naught plus h. Now, what's the error of Hoyne's method? Is it better or worse? You'll recall that, for example, uh, the Riemann sum approximation had an error that was order h squared, whereas the trapezoidal rule had an error that was order h cubed. The error of Euler's method was order h squared. Is the error of Huygens' method also order h squared, or, or is it order h cubed, or possibly even better? Well, we're going to look at two initial value problems and we will approximate y at t naught plus h for successively smaller values of h and see how much better we do. Now, just to go through an example of Hoyne's method first, let us approximate y at 0 0.4 with this initial value problem. Well, first we calculate s naught, which is equal to the slope at 0, 1, which is negative 1. We will now calculate the slope at one time step into the future, 0 0.4, with 1 plus 0 0.4 times negative 1, which is negative 0 0.6. Now, for this particular differential equation, the slope at 0 0.4, negative 0 0.6 is just negative 0 0.6. Thus, we will add on to y naught, which is 1, h times the average of these two slopes. Well, substituting in all the values, we get this. 1, negative 1 minus 0 0.6 is negative 0. Uh, at negative 1.6. Divide by 2 is negative 0 0.8 times 0 0.4. Well, that just gives us 0 0.68. All right. Uh, that's not bad, actually, uh, given the fact that the actual solution is 0 0.67. Uh, for such a large width, 0 0.4, that's actually pretty good. All right, let's approximate the solution at y at h for successively smaller values of h. So if h is equal to 0 0.5, the error is reasonably large. Not terrible, but not small. If we divide h by 2, notice that the error goes down. In fact, the error went down by a factor greater than 4. Again, if we approximate the value of the solution at 0 0.125, we've divided h by 2 again, the error again seems to go down. And if you take the ratio of those, the previous the current error over the previous error, it's starting to get pretty close to 0 0.125 or 1 eighth, which would be the error we reduction in error we would expect if the error was order h cubed. We can calculate again, and again the error seems to be dropping by a factor of 1 eighth and so on and so forth. And we can keep on proceeding in this manner. And at every single step, the error dropping by a factor of 1 eighth is a better and better approximation of how quickly that error is actually dropping, as we expect. And once again, now it's dropping by almost exactly 1 eighth. Here's another initial value problem with a different solution. But once again, we can approximate the value and compare it to the exact value. And so at every single step, we do note that already the error seems to be dropping, well, not initially, 
by one eighth. And as h gets smaller, it gets closer and closer to one eighth. So with reasonable confidence, we can say that it does appear that Euler's method or Hoyne's method has an error that is order h cubed. Now, can we prove that the error is indeed order h cubed? Well, there is a second order Taylor series of the solution at t naught. Well, wait a second. We know the initial value. So y at t naught is y naught. And we know that the slope is given by the function f at t naught y naught. So we can substitute those in because those are given to us in the initial value problem. Let us label the slope at the point t naught y naught as s naught. All right, so substituting that into the equation gives us this simplified version here. Now, let's use the forward divided difference approximation of the second derivative. So the second derivative at t naught is approximated by the derivative at t naught plus h minus the derivative at t naught all over h. And the error is given by negative a half times the third derivative at some point t tau one all times h. All right, so that is our forward divided difference approximation. So we can simplify it as follows. We can substitute s naught with the slope at the derivative at t naught. Okay, let's substitute this into the previous equation. So let's replace the second derivative at t naught with this expression. All right, so now instead we have a half times this expression times h squared. Let's expand this and collect on powers of h. Doing this, we get the following. All right, so we have y naught plus s naught times h minus a half s naught times h plus a half times the derivative at t naught plus h all times h plus what appears to be an error term. So we collected the two error terms and note that the common factor of the error terms is h cubed. All right, we can now simplify the previous equation by combining the two scalar multiples of s naught times h to get plus a half s naught times h. And we can also combine the two error terms into a single one. Because it's not a convex combination, we have to, however, replace it with this expression here, plus an additional error that is little o of h cubed. However, the last term of interest is this one here. Now, we know that the derivative at t naught plus h is f evaluated at these two points, but we don't know what that second point is. We don't know the value of the function of y at t naught plus h because that's what we're trying to approximate. So how can we replace that with something that we can calculate? Well, to do this, we will recall from calculus that if we have a sufficiently differentiable function of two variables g and the first entry is a, the second entry is b plus c, then this is equal to g at a, b, plus the partial of g with respect to b evaluated at points a and some unknown point beta, all times c. Now that's more general than we've had before, normally c is just assumed to be some small step size h but there's no guarantee or there's no necessity even that it must be just a fixed value like h all right we have that y the derivative at 
t0 plus h is just the function f evaluated at t0 plus h plus the solution evaluated at t0 plus h. But we don't know what the solution is at t0 plus h. That's what we're trying to find. We can, however, substitute the Taylor series approximate uh, value. So we will replace y at t0 plus h with that Taylor series together with the error term. All right, that gives us that expression here. Now we have a function of two variables where in this case, the second variable has a sum in it. What I'm going to do at this point is break that sum into two. So assuming h is small, then the second term in this sum should be smaller. So we have this first sum here and the second sum, which is an expression times h squared. Well, wait a second. We can now use that Taylor series expansion of a bivariate function as follows. And here we can see where we have left the one term in the expression, and then we've evaluated the second partial of f multiplied by that second term. All right. We can now simplify that error term to be one half times that unknown times h squared. All right. So now we will approximate or substitute this statement into the previous equation we had. So we will replace the derivative at t0 plus h with that expression above. That gives us this expression here. Now this is starting to look a little bit unwieldy, but that's okay. We can actually work with this because we can expand that second term and we're going to collect. Notice that we have one half plus a sum of two objects, all times h. Well, let's expand that out. Now, can we simplify this expression? Well, we can, we can multiply it out. And if we do so, we have this expression here. Notice that we have that derivative multiplied by a half times h plus the error term. Now notice that the error term is multiplied by h cubed. But not only that, that first term we looked at, did we not define S1 as the right-hand side of the ODE evaluated T0 plus H and Y0 plus S0 times H? Yes, it is. So let's substitute that into the equation and combine the two terms. We have a half s naught plus times h and a half s1 times h. Oh, wait a second. That's Hoyne's method. And that's Hoyne's method plus an error that is order h cubed. All right. As with Euler's method, one step of Hoyne's method only approximates the solution at a single point. We'd like to approximate the solution at a number of points or along an entire interval. So suppose we want to approximate the solution on the interval from t0 to some final value tf. Well, what we will do is we will, just with as with Euler's method, we will break that interval into n subintervals, and then we will apply Hoyne's method on each interval in order. What we're going to do is we're going to do this for two initial value problems with the initial condition y0 is equal to 1, and we will approximate y at 5 using 2 to the n intervals. But before we do this, let's look at an implementation. So the implementation almost perfectly parallels Euler's method. First of all, we're going to calculate the value of h. 
we will then create the three arrays we, we require, the value of the array of t values, the array of y values, and the array of the slopes at the y values, which we will use when we are interpolating the solution at a point between two t values. Again, we do not want to calculate a function more often than absolutely necessary, so it is often more convenient to return not only the t values and the y values, but also the derivatives at those values. Once again, we start by initializing these arrays at t naught, and that's just our first t value, our first initial condition, and the slope at that point. We're now going to apply Hoyne's method n times. So we calculate the next t value, but then we calculate the first slope. Now we could just use that slope, but I'm explicitly going to assign it to s naught so that you can see s naught in the algorithm. Now s1 is the function evaluated at tk plus 1, yk plus h times the previous slope. So now our approximation at k plus 1 is the approximation at k plus h times the average of these two slopes, and that is the result. We will calculate the derivative at this point as well. Once we've approximated all these values, we just return a tuple of these three pointers to arrays. All right, let's approximate y at 5 for this initial value problem. The actual solution to 16 significant digits is shown at the bottom. If we use two steps, um, that's not a really good approximation and the error is quite large. However, even with four steps, we're doing slightly better and the error has dropped significantly as well. With eight steps, once again, the error drops and our approximation is getting better. It's still not great. It's off by, well, the, error, the relative error is almost 100%, but the error is going down. Now we're getting close. With 16 steps, we're getting a reasonable approximation. And again, the error is dropping a reasonable amount. Using 32 steps, so now h is 5 divided by 32, we're getting a much better approximation. Now with 64 steps, we're doing even better. Notice now that the error is dropping by a factor of a quarter with each step. The 128 steps, we're doing even better, and so on and so forth. And now we expect, again, the error to drop by approximately one quarter. And yeah, it seems to do so. So it seems that, yes, we can approximate the solution to an initial value problem with sufficient steps. But let's look at the work that's required. To have 1024 subintervals means we have to evaluate the function f at not 1024, but 2048 points, because we will evaluate the function twice per iteration. So it's working, but it's still going to be expensive. For this second initial value problem with a solution shown here, once again, we can approximate y at 5 using a number of steps. And as you can see, uh, with two steps, the error is just too large. But as we go on, note that the error begins to decrease. 
and as we double the number of steps required the air is dropping by approximately 0.25 each time or by a factor of four so once again as expected the air is dropping by an appropriate amount as our calculation suggested thus as expected as with integration and with Euler's method the air accumulates and thus even though the air for one step is order h cubed if we repeatedly apply Hoyne's method multiple times then the cumulative effect results in an overall error that is now order h squared. Once again, let's go back to integration. If we were to use integration to find the solution to this differential equation, then we get that y at t naught plus h is y at t naught plus this integral. However, if we apply the trapezoidal rule to that integral we simply get the average of the value of the functions at t naught and t naught plus h that would be the trapezoidal rule and that's an approximation of the integral the issue is we only have an approximation of the second value because we don't know why at t naught plus h so in a sense Hoyne's method is a parallel to the trapezoidal rule. Following this talk, you understand that Hoyne's method is also a method for approximating a solution to a first order initial value problem. You are aware of the visual interpretation with respect to finding the slopes and averaging those two slopes. You understand that the error is order h cubed for a single step and we did the derivation of the error. Now, you're not expected to know that error. You, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what an engineer is required to understand. However, you have to be aware that yes, we can show that the error is indeed h cubed. When we get to fourth order rung kutta, we are going to assume that the error is as given by the mathematicians. Uh, it's just going to be simply too much work to show that fourth order runga kutta is indeed order h to the five. Uh, you are aware that we must apply this technique multiple times as with Euler's method to estimate the solution on a larger interval and we'll use splines to approximate the solution on those intervals and you know that the error drops in this case to order h squared. You've seen a number of examples and an implementation, and you understand the derivation and the parallel of Hoyne's method to the trapezoidal rule for integration. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers.